Munzer Jr. is starting on the inside of row 11. He's never raced here before. In their strategy meeting this morning, owner Rick Gallus pointed out to Little Al that there are going to be a number of yellow flags. Be patient. Attrition will allow the field to come back to you. If you have an opportunity, take your run. But remember, they have to set the cars up for a lower speed than what they ran in practice. And sometimes in the Vegas terminology, that's a crapshoot. This car is set up to run between 200 and 202. Keep an eye on the speeds today. Bob? Here's a starting lineup for the Vegas Indy 300 on the pole, Mark Dismore, but he blew an engine in the final practice last night, and Greg is the defending series champion. Recently, Greg got to fly in an F-15 from nearby Nellis Air Force Base. The 200 miles an hour he'll be going today pales in comparison to the high-speed jet. Second row, Scott Sharp and Eliseo Salazar. Row number three, Billy Boat and Jeff Ward. Starting back in row number four, Eddie Cheever Jr. and Jared Schrader. Then Jason Leffler and Scott Goodyear in the fifth row. Row number six will be Ayrton Dere and Sarah Fisher, the 19-year-old. Starting in row number seven, it's Donnie Beachler and Scott Harrington. Back in the eighth row, Stephen Gregoire and Robbie McGee. Gregoire went on his first fishing expedition earlier this week off the coast of Catalina Island with his car owner, Dick Simon. He, he shows a lot of resistance. The he caught probably <laughs> wasn't enough to feed the entire Good team. Guy. Jimmy Kite and Sam Hornish will start in row number nine. The 10th row, Buzz Calkins and Buddy Lazier. Allenzer Jr. and Jacques Lazier will go from row number 11. In the 12th row, Robbie Buell and Ronnie John Cox. Then it's Dr. Jack Miller and Doug Dodaro. And back in the last row, Tice Carlson, who crashed during the final time as he goes for a backup car. And he's also on a physical fitness kick. Working out regularly, he's lost about 50 pounds. He's tuning up for his third Indianapolis 500. Let's go to uh, Jack Aroot. What's the problem with Davey Hamilton? Well, Bob, the crew would like to know. The car fired normally. They had no problem. And then all of a sudden, it just stopped. Normally, that's an indicator that there's an electronics problem of some sort. They've got to try now to get the car back to pit road so they can do the diagnostics. Well, we hope we can get him started. We have a considerable number of uh, onboard cameras. Here's the Stars Encore Tickets.com mount from Al Unzer Jr. will be starting back in the 21st position. The Pennzoil Panther, driven by Scott Goodyear, starts in 10th position. We have that camera mounted just ahead of the left rear. Here's the Delphi Automotive's machine, driven by Scott Sharp. He'll be starting in third position this afternoon. Jeff Moore, the Harris AJ Point car, will start in sixth position. And the pole sitter is Mark Dismore in the OnStar GM Bipower Delara. Again, he has some concern because the car did blow an engine yesterday in final practice, the second one of the day. And Buddy Lazier in the Coors Delta Fawcett car also will have an onboard camera starting back in the 20th position. But Tom, I think it's pretty safe to say that he will be one of the drivers that we will look for early to move up through the field. Well, no question. It's a different car, but uh, they've been happy with the way the other car ran, and then we'll just see what happens. He's got to use his head early, though. Back down to Jack Aroot. Well, Bob, one problem and one concern for the pole sitter. They changed engines out. You talked about the fact he blew it. They're not quite sure right now because they've, these are the first laps that they've had on this engine. Their race engine went away, and they're very concerned. They're going to have to play it gingerly, Vince Welch, as to what they do at the drop of the green flag. Right behind the pole sitter, Mark Dismore, is his teammate, Scott Sharp. If Dismore takes a conservative approach after the first couple of laps, look for Sharp to take the lead. Sharp is very happy with these Firestone tires. They were here a year ago on Goodyear's, a much improved handling race car this time around. Of course, that 2000 chassis has something to do with it as well. They'll go 208 laps this afternoon, a distance of 312 miles. Sam Schmidt won this race last year. They'll have to have a fuel stop somewhere between laps 40 and 50, Tom, and that means four pit stops during this race. Yeah, the, the, the crews are going to be a big factor, and it's going to be fun to watch. Well, the uh, teams have been told that they will get the green flag next time around as Davey Hamilton's car still has not started. It's back on pit road, however, and hopefully they can get that machine going so that he can get into the race. Well, they had electronic problems in practice and couldn't get the thing fired up and missed some of the first part of the practice sessions also, so uh, they haven't solved all their problems yet. Mark Dismore and Greg Ray lead them down. Yeah. 
Slowly through turn number four. The field nicely aligned here. Now 27 cars as Hamilton is still on pit road. The field begin to accelerate just a little bit as they come down to the green. And it's on. And here we go. And Las Vegas, a great start as the front row stays right together. Well, Salazar on the outside here got a good run on these guys. Slides into second position behind Mark Dismore. We're on board with Scott Sharp as he comes up now beside Ray Ray. So Ray definitely not a very good start as he's being passed by several cars. And he's changing. Yeah, almost a three-wide situation there into uh, turn three for the first time. And he's cheaper in the gray car there. You saw made a great move on through the pack. This Ray Ray begins to uh, come back just a little bit. with uh, Scott Sharp here riding behind Greg Ray and Eddie Cheever. And already Buddy Lazier is beginning to move up through the traffic just like he did in Phoenix starting from the last position and coming on to win. He picked up seven spots in the first lap of the race. Well, they missed the setup qualifying. Look at, look at Sharp right, right behind Greg Ray. Inside Sharp's car right here. That's Eddie Cheever just up ahead of Greg Ray in the green and yellow car. Maybe don't realize it's a 300 uh, mile race, Bob, because it's typically getting after early. Well, the officials can tell these drivers, and I don't need to tell you because you want one to take it easy because it's a long race. But boy, when you get in the car, and especially if your car is working right, it's very difficult to lay back. Here's any cheaper now. Moving to the inside of Greg Ray. This is the battle for the fourth position. They're wheel to wheel all the way through the corner and onto the back stretch. Well, they've been having a good deal here for the last two or three races. Obviously, Eddie in the only infinity power car, and it's really doing some work out there now. Good battle going on here is up front. Mark Dismore continues to lead by about a full second over Eliseo Salazar in a car Get in the wall. Turn four. It is up in turn number four, and the cars are against Stefan Gregoire, and the rear wing has been torn off the car, and there's heavy left side damage. Well, you can see him get the, uh, the visor up, and he was looking around as the car was going backwards, so indicating he's probably okay, and he was concerned about oncoming traffic. See, the car hit pretty hard in the back. There's nothing left. The wing, the gearbox, all that stuff's gone. Stephen Gregoire driving for Dick Simon, who will celebrate 35 years in racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway this year. Gregoire brings out our first caution of the afternoon. They're assisting him out of the car. Considerable amount of damage there to that. Uh, Bob, the radio, Stephen Gregoire just radioed into his crew, and he reports that the engine blew. Uh -huh. Well, they did change engines and the gearbox in that car just before they qualified. And that resulted in him starting back in 15th position, but obviously something has gone wrong with the car here that resulted in the smack against the fourth turn wall. So we're under caution for the first time here at the Vegas Indy 300. It's Dismore, Salazar, Ward, Gray, and Cheever, the top five with four laps completed. Cleanup still underway here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. However, Stephen Gregoire did get out of the car under his own power and walk to the ambulance. Mark Dismore is the leader, and uh, he has about a, uh, well, and under the green, he had about a second advantage on Eliseo Salazar before we went to the caution area. Jack? Well, Bob, remember at the top of the show, we said there was some concern for Dismore for the engine. Well, they've checked it out. They've looked at the telemetry. They radioed to Dismore about a lap before the yellow. You've got the green light to go back to race configuration. Let's go after it. Vince? Richie Simon, crew chief for uh, Stefan Gregoire. You guys had a gearbox input problem. Any re any uh, relationship to the, in uh, the uh, accident out on the track? Uh, I don't think so. We're looking over the data right now in regard to the engine. Uh, it's hard to say right now if that's what happened, but uh, we just had reports of smoke. Uh, at the back, and then uh, and then a spin. So we either uh, you know we got oil on the tires as he went into turn three, and uh, backed it in. So I think it's it's two two separate incidences, and uh, it, it we'll look into the data for sure, so we'll know for sure. Richie, you guys have been so strong in practice, but you haven't been able to put the results out on the uh, on the track. You were eighth at the uh, Phoenix, but still I know disappointing through three races. Well, you know we were fifth in the warm up uh, yesterday. Uh, we went through the whole car last night, and uh, I was pretty confident about our chances today. It's unfortunate for the Max Mill car, Max Mill team. 
you know, we'll just, hey, we're not going to be down. We'll put that thing back together and we'll get them in Indianapolis. That's Richie Simon for Stefan Gregoire's team. Well, next Sunday, hot off his 50th career victory, Jeff Gordon at his Winston Cup competitors will be at the California Speedway for the Napa Auto Parts 500. You can see it live at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 Pacific here on ABC. By the way, Jeff Gordon is also the defending champion of that race. So Winston Cup racing next Sunday on ABC. Cleanup continues, but we should be going back to green when we return to the Vegas Indy 300. Seven laps complete. Tom Sneva, Jack Arute, and Vince Welch back with you at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We're still under caution. We've been told that in two more laps, they will go back to green flag racing. We're under caution because of a crash involving Stefan Gregoire in turn number three. Well, and from a driver's point of view, you know, you're on the ragged edge when the green flag's out every corner. And uh, a lot of times you make mistakes that cause accidents, but it's the mechanical things that really get your attention. And that probably gets your heart started more than anything because you're just a passenger when the motor blows up or or a tire goes down or something like that. And those are tough situations from a driver's standpoint. Davey Hamilton, who had a tough time getting started, is on the racetrack and uh, is still on the lead lap. However, Ronnie John Cox, who is driving the WorldBestBuy.com G-Force for Dennis McCormick and Jonathan Bird, is on pit road and is already hanging up but two laps down. Down to Vince Welch. Buddy Lazier, interesting you mentioned the fact that he uh, had already passed seven drivers just before the race started. Ron Himmelgarn went over the radio and reminded Buddy, hey, it's a long, hard race. Our goal is to be there at the end, so take it easy at the beginning. I don't know if Buddy's just not listening or what, but he passed seven guys and he's running 13. What's he doing there, Tom? Well, he's just trying to make sure the motor's cleaned out. Uh, so he dropped it down a gear and, and tried to clean the motor out. They've been running slow under the yellow, so you want to make sure that motor's going to respond. Uh, it was interesting the last shot sort of reminds me what the driver looks like uh, that, that fan that we saw that, that's what the driver looks like when a motor blows up we understand that Stefan Gregoire is okay he has been of course taken to the infield care center but uh, we'll be hopefully out of there in a few moments and if so we will get 
So under caution here, it's Mark Dismore who has led the first 11 laps. And they have found some more oil on the racetrack, so it's going to be at least another two laps before we go green. That gives us an opportunity to take another break. We'll return with more of the Vegas Indy 300 after this message and a word from our ABC station. Back here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, I'm joined by the two-time Indy 500 winner, Ari Leyendijk, and it gives me great pleasure to announce that Ari will be a part of our broadcast team at the Indianapolis 500 next month. He'll be joining Tom Sneva and me in the booth for the 84th running of the 500. Congratulations on that. It's going to be great to be working with you. Well, thank you. After uh, driving for 15 years, I'll be uh, an announcer now for the first time, so I'll be a rookie next year at Indianapolis. Who better this to year. ask about this racetrack than you? You won here your last race. What's it like out there at this racetrack? It gets very, very slippery at this time of day, and also the winds might pick up a little bit later, so you see a lot of adjustments to the cars during the pit stops. So look for that, especially guys like Buddy Lazier, Alonzo Jr., they'll, they'll for sure be working on their cars when they make those first pit stops. We're going to ask Ari to hang with us for two or three seconds and help call the action here as we are about ready to go back to competition. Now, Buddy Lazier, of course, has made the greatest advance since the uh, green flag drop. He started in the 20th position, and right now finds himself in the 13th position. Now, what we're going to do is on the bottom left of your right of your screen, that is the leader. We'll be following him with the onboard camera. But then in the bigger box in the upper left, we're going to be showing you the movements that Lazier is making. And right ahead of him is going to be Sarah Fisher and Scott Goodyear as we go back to green. So we'll see if he can make even further advancement when the green flag drops. Well, when we were inside Buddy's car, we heard him revving up the motor, and uh, Ari, you had another comment about what he might be doing there. Well, uh, before you get ready for a restart, like uh, Buddy was anticipating a restart then, but of course there was more oil on the track they had to clean up, but he's basically spinning the rear wheels to get the dirt off the wheels, and also to warm up those rear tires so he can really stand on it at the restart. Let's go down to Vince Welch just before we go to green. Several of the teams, Bob, are being told uh, and informed specifically where the accident occurred so they will, they will know where the oil dry will be on the track. As they run through the oil dry, it'll be uh, a bit of a dust bowl. And the field begins to pick up speed, and indeed the green flag is out, and we are back to the competition. Now Scott Goodyear there is trying to pass Donnie Beechler, but look at Lazier. He's already disposed of Sarah Fisher. Now goes to the outside of Beechler and tries to pick up yet another spot. So indeed, Lazier has a very fast race car. Now he's on the outside of Scott Goodyear. Again, Buddy, just like in Phoenix, I mean, he likes the traffic situation. This is really a fun time from a driver standpoint. Passing cars is what it's all about. The speed isn't what it's all about. It's passing other competition. And you try and take advantage of that situation on the restart where the field is really bunched up together so you can really get a lot of cars in, you know, in a short period of time. You really want to take advantage of a good restart. But now look at Donnie Beachler. He's uh, picked up a spot as now Scott Goodyear begins to uh, lose some positions. That's Fisher in the blue car right behind Scott Goodyear. Ayrton Garre is in the multi-color car behind Sarah Fisher. Well, that's Robbie McGee looking for a way to get around Garre. cars from the back and he is running up, up toward the front. Cheever's already advanced up to third position. He's running about two seconds behind the leader Mark Dismore, who has about a three-quarter second advantage on Eliseo Salazar. But the good battles for position are back here in the middle field. That's Jared Schrader, who was a rookie and also doing very well. He's seventh place and he's running right behind Greg Ray, who started from the outside of the front row and has dropped back here in the early going. Well, even though it's fun passing cars, I don't ever remember intentionally qualifying slow, so I can start with that to you. No, but it... Now to a Jack Aroo, who's with Stefan Gregoire. Well, there you can see on Stefan Gregoire's left foot, the ace bandage uh, bruised foot. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very glad I'm okay because it was a big hit. Unfortunately, the engine let go. How much warning did you have? 
not much, you know, I felt a big vibration. I thought it was the, the, hard, the drive shaft bearing which we had problems with before. And uh, the, the, the car span and I, I couldn't do anything uh, after that. I hit the back of the car which was very violent, but I'm very lucky to be uh, okay actually, so I'm very happy. Not to be cavalier guys, but when you go to Indy, you don't really need the left foot, you really need a heavy right foot. And of course, Gregoire failed to make the field for the Indy 500 last year after a confusing qualifying session, and so he will be looking to uh, start the Indy 500 this year. But well, we're watching this battle here that involves Ward and Sharp. Now back to Greg Ray, who's running sixth, and Jared Schrader, who is in the seventh position. Well, let's check some of the speeds here as they cross the line. Right now, it looks like the 14 uh -oh, car Sharp. Jeff Ward and Scott Inside Sharp. Sharp. Oh. You can they see him reaching for gears. The onboard camera tells the story. The car is on the apron of the racetrack. Now he's going to pull it completely off the racetrack. And we don't have a caution so far. He's been able to get that car completely We're off. done. I think contact has a big problem. He indicated contact. Kelly Craig Warlock says too. That's an engine problem. Now this is the Kelly team. This is the same team that Mark Dismore, the pole sitters, on two motors. Now this is Scott Sharp. His teammate has already lost the motor during this race. And he referred to content. That's the engine builder. That's Dr. Jack Miller, who has also come to a stop, and that will necessitate a caution. Well, Dr. Jack Miller in the milk chug car uh, is maybe going to qual call it quits. Tony Stewart was serving as crew chief on that car, and you can see that Scott Sharp has already abandoned the machine, and as he said on the radio, we are done. Well, you can see the bad breath coming out of That's not a good sign from the motor standpoint. There's Tom Kelly, the owner of the team. So another caution here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, our second of the day, Mark Dismore, Eliseo Salazar, Cheever Ward, and Greg Ray. Welcome back to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, where the caution is out. Dr. Jack Miller's car came to a rest, and so did Scott Sharp's machine, and what an incredibly bad piece of luck for him. Now listen for their onboard camera. It's going through turn number four now. That's bad luck and good luck, because he didn't have it happen to him in the middle of the turn. Well, a lot of times when they shut off that quick, the rear wheel's locked up, and he got very fortunate it didn't happen to him. Vince is with him. Well, it's been a good weekend for Scott Sharp, but not a good race today, because I know you guys were very optimistic about your chances today. We were, you know, the Delphi car, the team, we worked so hard all weekend on a race setup. We were just cruising, you know, I was just letting the guys, Greg and uh, Eddie wanted to get a little crazy for a while with each other, and I was just taking it real easy, and, you know, unfortunately, all of a sudden, motor just really tightened up in the middle of three and four, and it was, boom, gone. We had a great uh, look at it on the in car. What was it from your description? Who knows exactly what in the engine blew? Um, there's probably a hole on the side of it, so <laughs> hard to tell. Disappointment for Scott Sharp, Bob. Big time disappointment as the green flag come back, comes back out and we resume competition. On board with Jeff Ward now, Eddie Cheever right beside him. This is a battle up front here. Well, there's good racing going on. Cheever likes to mix, mix it up early. You heard Sharp refer to uh, to the mixing up early as getting a little crazy. And, uh, but that's it. He, he likes to go from the time the flag drops. Some guys with it too good, so the water's changed quite a bit. So if you look at uh, Cheever and Jeff Ward, that was a quite good position. Uh, Jeff Ward getting around Cheever there. Now, Carlson and Buell both pitted during that caution flight, and so they are going to be out of sequence with everybody else who remain on the racetrack. Big pack of cars here down the back stretch. On board once again with Buddy Lazier. Lazier is up in 14th spot right now, started 20th. Hasn't made perhaps the advancement we thought he would. He moved up considerably, Tom, but then got into a bunch of cars and running about the same speed that he is. Well, what happened, we heard the radio, the car started to go to neutral. So he probably had a little understeer, and now the car's starting to loosen up as the laps go on, and uh, you know, he's got to maintain that pace until he can make an adjustment at the stop. Let's get down to Jack Rubens with Tony Stewart, the crew chief on Jack Miller's car. And they've done a removal of diagnostics. They've had to replace one of the ECUs. Tony, the ignition is what gave up. He said that the battery must have went dead. I don't know. We had a battery problem yesterday. I don't know if it's something that shortened the battery out or not, but uh, the battery went down, put a new battery, and it fired right up and sent it back out. Dr. Miller's back out on the racetrack, guys. Good to hear that. Ah, 
look at the move now that Lazier puts on Jason Leffler, driving the Epson-sponsored car, and moved Lazier up another position. Well, when he moved, uh, when he moved Jason out, uh, two or three guys were able to get by. That's how close the competition is. Uh, you get moved out of the groove, and uh, you know you go to the back. significant contact with the wall there on the left side of the car. Well, the left rear, left side hit hard. You can see him, uh, the adrenaline gets them out of the car and then, then they start coming to their senses and start feeling some of the pains. Coming into this race, Donnie was in fourth position in the point standings, has gotten off to a very, very good start here in the year 2000, finishing sixth at Orlando and third at Phoenix. But unfortunately, his, his race is going to end much too soon here at Las Vegas against the fourth turn wall. Well, he was lucky as he came back across the track. There's a lot of traffic there, Bob, and, and everybody did a great job in, in missing him. Well, he's down on the uh, grass. The medics and the doctors there asking him how he feels. Let's take a look at uh, the accident from regular speed, our speed shot down in the turn four area. Well, you can see him just the back into the car just jumped out from underneath him. Uh, hard hit the outside wall. As he was spinning, though, you could see something come off the car before he actually hit the wall. And that's quite interesting. There's the 38-year-old driver from Springfield, Illinois. Hopefully he's going to be okay. It would appear as if he is. So again, we are under caution, and let's take a look at it once again. Yep. Down our sideways. Right there, something is flying over right, the car. You can right see there. there. That might have contributed to his uh, spin. Down in Donnie Beachler's pit, guys, and uh, they said they had no idea the car was running along fine. Donnie had not complained about anything with the car, and uh, so they had no no indication as to what caused the incident. As you pointed out, something obviously coming off the car didn't help. And now those running up front are coming in for pit stops. Eliseo Salazar on the inside of Mark Dismore. Orange arm here. And it's the leader, Bob, that will bring the field down, Mark Dismore. His major concern more, right more, now more, is the more, push more, out of the car. There you go. Feel reset. Feel reset. Keeping the reps up. Clear all the way. Clear all the way. Clear all the way. So they hope that the tires, you're all clear. They hope the tires will cure the push problem, gentlemen. That was a great stop by the crew. Well, it was interesting. Coming in, uh, Salazar actually passed this floor, and uh, it's interesting that the rev limiter, the uh, pit speed limiters on both cars must be a little different, and, it, and I'm surprised that uh, Salazar wasn't uh, concerned about going too fast through that pit. Well, the speed limit is 60 miles an hour on pit road, but Mark Dismore wins the race off pit road. We'll have more in just a moment. Welcome back to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That piece right there on the left side of the car is uh, what should detach from the car. That's the air hose that lifts the car off the ground during a pit stop. There was an incident on pit road, Jack Aroot. And his name is Glenn Wheeler, but we all know him as Packy, and uh, you're the fuel man for uh, LSAO Salazar. Tell us what happened. I really don't know, Jack. I just pulled out, and the next thing I know, I think it was either air hose or the fuel wand was stuck in there, or the air vent was stuck in the car came slapping back and hit me here on the forearm. About all I know, it knocked me down, kind of wrapped me up like a snake. About all I can tell you, 
we could see on as you showed Bob that uh, it was indeed the air jack that lifts things up to kind of slap Packy right here in the left arm. Let's go back to you. Let's hope he's okay. Let's take a look at a pit summary. Mark Dismore lost four positions there. Eliseo Salazar, he had to come in that second time and get that piece off the car. Squeeze dropped 15 spots. Ward lost four. Cheever, two. And Greg Ray moved up four positions because he did not pit. Billy Boat did not pit. Robbie Buell and Tice Carlson pitted earlier during a caution, so they are the top four as we go back to green with Mark Dismore, who was leading, running in the fifth position. Well, Billy Boat, the white car, got a big jump on Greg Ray on that restart, but couldn't quite pull the pass up. They're really happy with the Billy Boat car, guys. They've not come in, as you mentioned, uh, to take an advantage of a pit stop because they're not yet in the fuel window. They can go at least another 25 laps without having to stop for fuel, and the car is perfect. Interesting here is that Bobby Buell did pit on the first yellow, so he's a little bit out of sequence with most of the cars out there. Well, now we'll see if Mark Dismore can be as strong as he was before. We had the caution. He's back in the fourth position, about two seconds behind Greg Ray, the leader. But look at him close in quickly on that slower traffic. That is Buell. He's going to the inside. Good job. And Davey Hamilton. Well, he got a good run on him. Those guys were pushing the air out of the way for him, so he's able to really get some momentum going and just drop down below and go by. If you're keeping track of where they're running up in the upper left box, the uh, colors that we show you on their number coordinates with the car on the racetrack. So in other words, Davey Hamilton running an orange car, and Dr. Jack Miller's car is mostly white. And Las Vegas Motor Speedway, here is Eddie Cheever trying to pick up fourth position from Robbie Buell, but unable to do so. We're at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Vegas City 300. Bob Jenkins, Tom Sneva, Ari Leyendijk, Vince Welch, and Jack Aroot with the action. And we are 42 laps into this 208-lap race. Well, Jeff Ward in the white and purple car, when Eddie couldn't quite make the pass, he had to roll up the front a little bit and gave Ward a chance to really close up from behind. We understand that the infield care center reports to us that Donnie Beachler is fine. No injuries. That is very good news. There is Jeff Ward to the inside of Robbie Buell. And Ward now goes to the fifth position. Cheever looks like he's on the move again. He got held up a little bit by Buell. But once he's able to clear him, uh, he's going towards him. Tom, in the recent pit stop, Cheever took a turn of front wing. He has made the maximum adjustments to his front and rear uh, roll bars. And another problem with the Cheever in the pits, he does not have the pit speed limiter working. So they've got to be very careful not to speed in the uh, pit area and be penalized. Well, that happens a lot, Vince. Uh, you know, they have controls in the car. They've got the sway bars they can go back and forth with. But a lot of times they run out of adjustment. So they need that pit stop to be able to change the aerodynamics of the car and, and make a bigger adjustment to catch the problem. The music guy, I've been keeping an eye on uh, Salazar. Started on the restart 17th. He's already up to 11th. He's a sort of guy on the move. And he's going to really wear to the front. He had a good car in the beginning. And the car is still good after this pit stop. That is Jared Schrader just ahead of him. Schrader running in 10th and Salazar in 11th spot. Salazar, former winner here, so he likes this racetrack. He talked about how flat it is. It's really a driver's racetrack. Uh, as you know, it's one of the flatter, high bank, high speed uh, tracks that we run. So, uh, the car always feels, uh, because of the, the bank not being that bank, the car always feels like it's kind of floating through the turns. They always kind of have to hustle a little bit with the car. Salazar just lost a position there to Robbie McGee. We're on board with Jeff Ward once again as he has put himself in the fifth position, but the top five are running very, very close together. Mark Dismore there has moved back up to third spot, and we're on board with him. That is Billy Boat up ahead, running in second position. Well, you saw on board. Uh, outside, he's flying outside, looking outside. Dismore was right, able, to, off. able to drop below the line in the corner, so he's able to drive looking that outside, car about anywhere. Looking outside. Down to the inside of Eddie Cheever in the excited home. Dots come sponsor the car. Close there. Whoa, very <laughs> close, but got the job done. The head of Cheever right behind you. Well, that ought to excite you home. <laughs> <laughs> well, there again, Cheever uh, couldn't quite make the pass. Uh, lost a little bit of momentum, and Jeff Ward is right there. I mean, it doesn't take long to get past or to pass, but uh, you know, these races are very hard to win because the cars are so equal that uh, that's why they're running so hard from the get-go. They don't want to lose track position. Very important. 
Well, and as you know, the motors are a little smaller this year, so if you have to roll out of the throttle, it takes a little bit more time to get it back up to speed. Tomorrow, ABC Sports continues its coverage of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs with conference quarterfinal action, Game 6, St. Louis at San Jose. Live tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific on ABC, home of the Stanley Cup. For more, log on to abcsports.com, part of Go Network. Again, the top five right there down the back straightaway, led by Greg Ray and the Green Cup. And Tom, one of the things that Greg Ray and Thomas Snap is crew chief like right now is the race pace. They've looked at the last four or five laps that Ray has set, and they went to Ray and said, hey, that's the pace we want. Now just settle in. And the pace is they're running about 198 mile an hour laps. Well, they qualified 207 or, or 8, and, uh, you know, they're down almost 10 miles an hour over what uh, they qualified at. Tom, the fastest car on the racetrack right now is that gray-colored car on the right of your screen. That is Eddie Cheever. He ran a lap in excess of 200 miles an hour while everybody else, as you said, running in the 197, 198, 199 right now. Yeah, that's true, but he is running in about, uh, you know, fourth or fifth there in the group, and he's picking up quite a nice draft, and that's how he is able to have a faster lap time, but he's not really going faster. On two. Good job, Rick. great job. Gisborne down low in the red, white, and black car. Got a good run in that group of cars. And Ray eight. ahead. This is Jeff Ford on the outside. You heard him have to lift just a little bit. He killed some of his momentum on that pass. And Eddie Cheever picks up another position, too. So now Dismore has moved to second. On Dare, you say him shoot up through there again when uh, Ward got hesitated just an ounce and gave the guys from behind a, a chance to get a run on. Ayrton Dare, the rookie, doing an excellent job. This is the USACredit.com G Force. And he has moved up now to the sixth position. for third spot that Cheever gets and by the way Glenn uh, Packy Walker who was a wheeler rather that was uh, involved in that incident on pit road in the Elisayo Salazar pit is going to stay on pit road and continue in the race at away. Salazar by the way now is in the ninth place. But again there's these four or five cars are all running right together for position this is second on back. This is the battle for second position. Eddie Cheever is just all over Mark Dismore. But Dismore holds on to the second position. Mark is running about two and uh, a half seconds behind the leader, Craig Ray. So while all this battling has been going on for position behind him, Craig Ray has put quite a bit of racetrack between himself and the rest of the field. Vince Welch, meanwhile, is with Donnie Beachler. Certainly not the way Donnie Beachler wanted to finish it up. What happened there in four? Well, I'll tell you what, we, uh, we chased some Billy Boat there and had a good race going, had a good race car, and uh, I did want to drive in the corner right behind because it takes all your Air Force down. So I moved down just a little bit, and I hadn't been that low on the track all day, and I hit a bump, I think, and it, it turned the car sideways. And it's unfortunate because we did have a good car, and we're, we're up at the point, so we got a new one back at the shop. We'll go to India and see what happens. Ford is at the 500. Donnie Beachley. If you were with us on our Indy Racing Today show on ESPN2, you heard Tom Sneva talk exactly about those bumps down in turn four. Yeah, again, they, they're not a factor when you're by yourself, but when you get in traffic situations, you got to move the car around to avoid trouble, and sometimes it gets you in trouble, all right? Probably when you went down there, hit the bumps, the front wings, actually uh, came in contact with, with the road, and uh, just put a lot of down pressure on the front end of the car that made the, the car spin around. And that's why we could have seen flying off the car there. Right. Watching here the fourth, fifth, and sixth positions. Billy Boat in white, then Ayrton Dare in the purple and yellow car. And behind him is Jeff Ward. Now on back here to Buddy Lazier, Robbie McGee, and Eliseo Salazar. This is seventh, eighth, and ninth. Well, there's good battles. I mean, these guys are be smiling and drinking their teeth uh, all the way back through the field. But there's some really good racing going on out there. One of the problems for Robbie McGee's crew is that they can talk to him, but he cannot talk to them. So you can imagine what the signaling pit in the back stretch looks like right now. Uh, that's very tough for the driver. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's always more fun if you can talk to the crew, uh, and, and sometimes you don't have to listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> well, Greg Ray is the leader of the race, but now you can see that Mark Dismore has caught back up with him. This, sec this uh, separation was more than two seconds just a few laps ago, but Mark Dismore has closed in once again on Greg Ray. And remember, Ray is looking, should be looking for a pick.
pit stop here before too much longer. On board with Mark Dismore. Bobby should be pitting in about three and a half laps. That's what the call out to the out from pit road was. Yeah, I'm not sure about their strategy right now because it's going to be very fortunate if they catch a yellow, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I think Ray's in a little bit of trouble. Question mark with Dismore. Uh, they've had motor problems, and half his team's already gone, so they've got to be crossing their fingers a little bit on the motor side. And this really shows you how strong Mark Dismore is running. He's running on, on, on the car with a lot more fuel in it than Greg Ray, but he catches up to him and is about to take the lead before Greg Ray is going to make a green lap pit stop. And if he has to make a green lap pit stop here, I think it's going to be all over for Greg Ray. Well, and that, not only that, uh, you know, Dismore's got to be running the thing pretty conservative, worried about the engine situation. He's probably running a lot of fuel through it, and maybe not the RPMs that he'd like to run, and he's still has caught the leader. Behind, close behind on Keepers. Yes, he sure is. Cheever is right there with them. So it's a three-car battle for the lead now. Ray Dismore and Eddie Cheever winning the only Infinity-powered car in the race. It sure is good to see a guy like Cheever who is above 40 being that racist. <laughs> Especially for us guys that are over 40, right, Aaron? Yeah, just, just <laughs> coincidental. Well, not only that, Freddie, but uh, it's the only Infinity in the race. And, uh, you know, it's given a good showing. They, they made some great gains. And here is Greg Ray peeling off the racetrack and headed for pit road. So Greg Ray gives up the lead and comes in for his pit stop. He'll have to be down to under 60 miles an hour as he heads for you, Jackaroo. And, Bob, in addition to Ray, preceding him was Billy Boat, who also made the fuel gamble, electing not to pit during that last caution. They're going to go and make an adjustment on the left front wing. So as you watch this pit stop, watch for a crew member to twist the tiny knob. He does, up front. And now they're making a change. And he lights it up, Vince Welch, as we go down to you. Mark Dismore, it's going to be a while before he has to pit. He's already come in once. They've got another 25 laps before their window opens. The car is handling excellently. They have not touched the chassis at all. And as far as that engine is concerned, no problems for Mark Dismore and the Kelly Racing team. Well, we saw the change, the adjustment for the front wing that they made on Greg Ray. That, that wasn't a very big adjustment, was it, Art? No, that was not. That was just uh, maybe a half turn of left front wing. So he's really pretty happy with the balance. But obviously, right now, he's left down and he's totally unhappy Ari, with that. one of the reasons why they did that was because they changed the stack or the circumference of the tires, and they wanted to compensate for that. Well, right now, Mark Dismore has a miracle of any cheaper running second. We'll return after these messages and a word from our... And Buddy Lazier, we were going to break, but we'll hold off because Buddy Lazier is slow on the racetrack. Down right, to the apron. Ignition switch off and on. Ignition switch off and on. He just quit on him, and he's trying to get his fires back up. And he's your points leader. Not, Hardy, not I tried points. that. If I go anymore, I'm going to stop. I'm going to try to coast as far as I can. Well, no caution yet because he's on the uh, warm-up lane, but uh, obviously the car is very, very sick. Well, we will find out what happened to Buddy Lazier and return with more of the Vegas Indy 300 after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Mobile One. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Here now, Bob Jenkins. We have quite a race going on here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. There's your leader, Mark Dismore. 73 laps completed. The green race average is over 201 miles an hour. We've had five different leaders and six lead changes. Three caution periods, two crashes, including Donnie Beachler and Stephen Gregoire. And Eddie Cheever is slowing down. Well, when we went to break, Buddy Lazier was slowing down. And now Eddie Cheever is headed for pit road after having a great battle up front with Mark Dismore. Well, and obviously, this is not planned because he dropped down real late, so the thing just died on him. Vince Welch is right there. Eddie Cheever in the box, and they're going to take the, uh, obviously, put the car up on the jacks. They're, at this point, doing nothing unusual. They're just changing the tires, but they're not doing it in a hurried fashion. They've refueled. They have refueled. He may have run out of fuel. Engine stopping. The pressure is good, so it's not a motor problem. Owen Snyder changes the right front. Now they're going to have to start it. So it does indeed look like it was a fuel. Dick Karen, Dick, it was a fuel? Uh, electrical problem, apparently. Just quit on him. That's Dick Karen, the team manager. Now they're taking off the rear cowling. It's a bad end for uh, Eddie Cheever. Once again, a great performance while he was on the racetrack by Eddie Cheever. But 
it too ends prematurely. Now, Jack Aroot, what was the problem with Buddy Lazier? Well, Ron Hemelgarn, your first indication was on the telemetry when the fuel pressure went yellow. Right. It, 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 the car was running great, and, and uh, we're running seventh, and all of a sudden the fuel pressure just dropped. Car shut off, so now we're trying to get pulled back in and try to work on the car and get back out there and get some points. What have you seen from the telemetry to indicate what happened? Just the fuel pressure totally dropped, just shut off. It's just, it's just like in a passenger car, guys, over on the telemetry, a big red light comes on and says fuel pressure. And we might mention that shot we had there, the uh, track crew, the IRL officials working with that car. It is in the infield. It is not any ways close to the racetrack, so it is not a threat. And what they're trying to do is bring them into the garage area so they can work on it. And a great battle shaping up here. Where has Robbie McGee come from? But he's right up there in a battle for the lead with Dismore. Well, he's all over him right, right there. He's going by on the inside. There's that Twinway car working really good here last year. Sam Smith won the race the year before I won the race for Twinway Racing, and now is Robbie McGee leading the race for Twinway Racing right there. All.com Energizer Chief Horse by Robbie McGee has gone to the front, and Dismore seems to be slowing down here as Ayrton Darre has just taken second for Mark. You can see Mark is he's just threading it. He has a major problem with either the handling or something happened back there with the engine, but uh, he slowed down dramatically. Look here how that board now is gonna be all over him pretty soon. We heard on the radio that he was concerned about the car pushing, so it's got some understeer, and maybe it's getting worse as the laps go on. And we can have a real good look at him here as we go into turn one, how fast Jeff Ward will close in on him. You can hear the engine, he just rolls out of it just a little bit. And Tom, that last lap, this car was 10 miles an hour slower than uh, the fastest car was Ayrton Dare. So a definite problem with that car. On board with Jeff Ward, and we're going to see if he's able to take that position away from this car. I think you're right, Tom, because when uh, Mark was following the other car, he had to back off because he had so much push probably that he just couldn't follow the car for the turn. Now he has a clean track in front of him. He's not too bad, but he's still slower than Jeff Ward. Vince, what can you tell us from Dismore's pit? Well, indeed, it is a big push, and I just talked with Jim Frugenberg, the uh, team manager, said they don't know exactly why they've uh, picked up the push. They're hoping for a yellow because they don't want to pit under green. That would certainly cost them their chances. Right now, Dismore, Ward, and Salazar running right together on the racetrack, separated by just a few car lengths. And right behind Salazar, not right behind him, but position-wise behind Salazar is Al Unser Jr. Al Unser Jr. in the Tickets.com Stars Encore Super Pack. G-Force has made a great showing here today because he also had a poor starting position up to 21st. And here comes Salazar to the inside and passing Ward, the red-blue card just passed his teammate. He's come all the way from the back, so Salazar is still there to be yeah. worried about. <laughs> Came from 17th place on that restart, so his car's working great for him. So the A.J. Foy cars are running fourth and fifth, and we understand Robbie McGee will be making a pit stop in three laps. McGee has the lead right now. And Bob, they think they may have solved the radio problem, but Robbie is still trying to give hand signals, and they radioed to him and said, look, Keep both hands on the wheel. Don't worry about the hand signal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. I understand that Alonzo Jr. also planning a pit stop in about three more laps. Well, with this kind of tight, tight traffic, uh, his only hand signal might be to another driver out there. <laughs> and you can hear this one get on and off the throttle. He's coping with that understeer, with that push condition. And the only way to get rid of that is to have to get out of the throttle. You cannot keep your foot in it. It will just make it worse. So he's battling that right now, and he's hoping to get yellow. It's compounded, Ari, as you know, when it gets into traffic, it gets around other cars, it gets much, much worse. Position dropped back to 12, and now here is Alan Sir Jr. coming down for the pit stop. Bob, they're not going to change a thing on the car. Opinion. The chassis is uh, working nicely. They're just going to give him fuel and tires. Little Al had not run this car in traffic this weekend. That was Please one of their concerns. That was one of their concerns heading into the race is that he had not run in traffic, but obviously the car is handling nicely. Their strategy today, be on the lead lap and within striking distance at the end, and they are indeed on the lead lap and within striking distance after a flawless pit stop. Now Robbie McGee comes in for a stop, and right behind him is Arjun Dare. So uh, two drive running first.
first and second, give up those positions to come down pit road. And Bob, they are separated, Dare and McGee, by one open pit. So this will be fascinating. It'll be kind of like a face-off in the home. Oh. And Jeff Ward has a problem down the back stretch. I don't know whether he crashed or whether he just has a problem. Yeah, but he hit the wall with the he? right front is all askew and uh, the right rear is wobbly. And Pretty probably the right rear, too. too. That's where the smoke came from. Yep, there he is. Yeah. Got that deflated tire. Well, he's being, uh, he is able to drive the car back to pit road if it's going to run that long. He's down on the warm up lane right now, but the caution flag is out for the fourth time this afternoon. And it kind of gives us a break there, but it's an unfortunate situation for those who were on pit road or who just pitted. Well, and it's really going to help some because some of the guys hadn't pitted yet. They were all scheduled to come in shortly. Now there is Jeff Ward. You can see that right in the also flat and he will stop the car just shy of the entrance to the pit road. Well, this is really going to help Mark Dishmore who I just said was hoping for a yellow and here he has he's got it. Up the next lap. Well and again when most of his closest competition had to stop under the green. This is front front big break for that Mark. Jacker. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's give the Jacker a pump and see. Let's take a look at what happened to Jeff Ward. He's on the outside there off turn He's in the two. marbles. Yeah. Again, he just gets out, up out the groove just now as he gets in the loose stuff, and uh, then you're a passenger. Hope you don't hit too hard. Guys, Craig Baranowski from the AJ Point team just told me that they were going to pit in three laps because the car had been so loose, so he just couldn't hold on to it. Actually, in that screen, we saw that uh, Salazar was just below him, and maybe Salazar made a pass on him right there. He couldn't get it down into the groove up in the gray and that was it well and you know how that is if you got a loose race car you're afraid to turn it very much you know you're on your tiptoes and uh with the other cars around him take a little more air off that rear wing and uh a tough situation jeff ward stays on board here's what happened from his perspective yeah. just before wall contact is when your right eye goes shut at that Go, oh. <laughs> well, the running order now is Dismore, Salazar, Goodyear, Sarah Fisher is running in fourth position, and Greg Leffler is in fifth. Jason Leffler. Jason Leffler, yes. So Bob, the leader is... Well, the pits Bob, the leader is going to pit as soon as the pits are open, and you, sh you alluded to the fact that it would be a break for Mark Dismore. It's going to be a break in more than one fashion. They're going to make a chassis adjustment on the front of the car. They're still chasing the front end. They're going to so watch again for a crew member to make an adjustment on the front wing. Well, again, like you said earlier, Jack, uh, not only do they change the wing, uh, maybe they might not make a big wing adjustment. Because but you adjust can... for it in the stagger. Exactly. You change the size of the right rear compared to the left rear, which really affects the way the car handles the corner. And also, uh, Eliseo Salazar, his pit and A.J. Foyt's crew, they're set up. They're waiting as well. We'll have to remain to be seen if this is going to be another one of those face-offs between Salazar and Dismore. Well, the other problem with Salazar, you know, he had the problem in the pit the first time. It'll be interesting to make sure that that air jack works properly since the hose ripped off the last time. I'm going to stand back. Split screen with Dismore You on got top. a straight shot of Glenn Salazar down here. Orange on the arm. Bottom. Orange arm. That's in there, is right behind that. Reset. Have a clear shot out. You're going to have a clear shot out here. And they make the go, go, go. Watch your pitch speed, pitch speed, pitch speed. Wow. Salazar a little bit slow getting through that pit stop. Uh, Dismore had a great stop. Goodyear just took in some front wing. They changed the tires, obviously, and build it up in the tank. Earlier today, right before the race, I was talking with Kevin Blanche, the crew chief on Scott Goodyear's team, and they said, just be within striking distance. They feel like they have a winning car. Whoever wins this race is going to have to beat us today. Goodyear in good position. He's running third. 91 laps completed at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Back in a moment with the green flag. On the back, 94 laps of the year. 300. On lap early in the race, it was.
with Stefan Gregoire into the wall and turn number four on the 22nd lap. Listen at this. Scott Sharp, he's out of the race. On lap number 32, Donnie Beachler's car swaps in and makes heavy contact with the right side. He, however, is okay. Lap number 65, Buddy Lazier, who had moved up so quickly, finds himself with a problem. And Eddie Cheever was battling for the lead when he had a mechanical problem. Most recently on the 87th lap, Jeff Ward out at the marbles and into the backstretch wall. That brings you up to date on what has happened here in the Indy Racing Northern Light Series Vegas Indy 300, the final tune-up before the Indianapolis 500. And by the way, we'll have all the action for you on Sunday, May 28th at 11 o'clock, the 84th running of the greatest spectacle in racing. Of course, Juan Montoya and Jimmy Vassar from the Kart Series are coming over to join the Northern Light Indy Racing Series and it should be one of the most exciting Indy 500s in recent memory. Well, there you can see that not a great deal changed. In fact, nothing changed among the top five on those pit stops. Back down to the pit area. Well, Bob, let's update you on Mark Dismore's situation. They are trying to maintain a conservation mode with their front tires. They've still got a little bit of a push. They said, let's worry about our car. Don't worry about anybody else's. Well, Mark Dismore is the leader of the Red race. Green, 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 green. However, he is in the middle of the pack. Now, we've got four drivers, Robbie McGee, Greg Gray, Alan Jr., and Arjun Dare, who are at the tail end of the lead lap. They are ahead of Dismore, and of course, will try to stay there. Alan Alexeo Salazar challenges Dismore, look and look at this. Traffic jam. Oh, well, Robbie McGee out. is forced up into the marbles, but I think he's looked at very oh. close there. Wheel banging going on down the back stretch. There's Robbie Buell going around the outside, and these guys are having fun. Well, that's Greg Ray, who's, uh, you know, got stuck on the, on the pit stop situation. He just got a lap down right there. He will go a lap down. That's Dismore and Salazar battling out for the lead, and Salazar has the advantage right now. Well, there's some great stuff going on here. It's hard to watch all this at one time. I mean, there's some action. And there. there is Davey Hamilton dropping down on the apron of the racetrack as the action continues on the speedway itself. And by the way, Eliseo Salazar is leading the first laps of the Indy Racing Water Light Series since he won here in October of 1997. Robbie Buell is a picture up there. He's got the little race as well. Just got about Alonzo Jr. And uh, Robbie Buell is running now in seventh place. Bob A.J. Boyd told Eliseo Salazar to be cool. He said, we can win this thing. Play it cool. You're one of the fastest cars. And uh, we got to use that speed in our cool to win it. Salazar had an interesting comment our, uh, on our Indy Racing Today program. We asked him what has been the difference this year from last year. He says, <laughs> I like that. What David if Hamilton this? just but, tapping the wall right uh -huh. there. And Sarah Fisher in the blue car right behind him. I mean, there's just three and four wide out there. There's just not enough race for these guys to, to, to go everywhere they want to go. Well, Salazar and by about a second and a half now. He comes up on an air to Dare, who is running in sixth position, but is on, again, the tail end of the lead lap. There's a second of separation between first and second spot. And Scott Cook here, there in the Pennzoil Panther car, the yellow car, is running in third position. Bob, a very scary incident on the Scott Goodyear's last pit stop. Some methanol splashed into the helmet of the uh, fueler, Shane Davey. They had a little bit of a problem with the hookup nozzle. And uh, as you know, if the uh, methanol starts flying around in the pit box, everybody's jumping. But Shane Davey had the water washed out in his eyes, and he's going to get back in the groove here. <laughs> Even with a wet fire suit, he's not going to take it off. He's going to stay in and uh, take care of Goodyear in the pits. Well, you saw Goodyear get right up behind uh, Little Al, but he had to roll out of the throttle. You can see how much space he lost. He just had to roll out of the throttle a little bit because he caught him in the wrong spot. He picked up quite a bit of push, and he had to get in and out of the throttle, and he lost so much ground to him, and that just shows you uh, if you don't push in traffic, you're really going to be hooked up around here. Well, how about this young lady from Ohio, 19 years old, Sarah Fisher, driving for Derek Walker Racing, coming sponsorship on the car. She is in fourth position, and right behind her is Jason Leffler, the uh, another rookie in the series. And who's Bob, in Derek two. Walker is counseling his gal on fuel conservation. You know how many times have we seen Walker try to stretch fuel mileage? Right now, he likes what he sees on the telemetry. 
He's told Sarah to be very deliberate and very careful. They would like to finish this race with one more stop. Well, I can remember several races in Derek Walker's career that he has used this very strategy to get his driver in the winner's circle. And we are at the halfway point. 104 laps completed and 104 laps to go as Eliseo Salazar right now has a two and a half second lead on Mark Dismore, a four and a half second lead on Scott Goodyear. Fisher and Leffler complete the top five. More from Las Vegas in a moment. Beautiful skyline of Las Vegas. Now this is something new. It shows you the separation between Salazar in blue, Dismore in red running second, and Scott Goodyear in third who is in the yellow car. You see how close they are on the racetrack. This is something that we've developed for you just to give you an idea of how much there is separating positions. And we will perfect that and hopefully have it ready for you at the Indianapolis 500. Well, there is Ayrton Darre right ahead of uh, Eliseo Salazar. And of those four cars that were on the tail end of the lead lap when we went green, he is the only one that's been able to stay on the lead lap as Ray and Unzer have, and McGee have all lost a lap. Down to Jack Aroo. And Davey Hamilton and his free eye net car have been parked for the day. What happened? Yeah, we just got up a little bit high. We tried to pass. I think it was Jock was there. I guess, I guess it's funner to tell him I was there and got the marbles, but uh, it's been a tough day. We, we get, didn't even get started off with, uh, had some electronical problems, I guess, and just trying to stay out of the way, but in it short. Baby, your day's not over, though. Nah, I'm, I gotta go try to win a race. I'm gonna go get on a plane to go to Tucson and race a sprint car tonight for Boston Sonny, so I'm on my way to the airport. This guy never quits, guys. And he won. A uh, USAC uh, sanctioned race not too long ago at Irwindale, a USAC Western Sprint Car feature on the first day of April. So uh, Navy Hamilton is willing to race anything, anywhere. Let's take a look at the speeds here as they cross the line. Salazar quick, Scott Goodyear second quick of the top three so far. Sarah Fisher with a lap of 195 is second quick that lap. How about that? She's doing a great job. No question about that. I'm not sure, uh, Jack, that uh, that our question of the week, uh, you know, there was a diesel in it. That Cummins diesel is running pretty good right now with Sarah Fisher. <laughs> there she is. Just 19 years of age. Looking forward to Indianapolis. Interesting to see how she does. By the way, she recently won one of the Rich Vogler Memorial Scholarship Awards, $1,000, and she will use it to attend an Indiana college and study mechanical engineering. Well, and she's, she's got, I mean, she carries a pretty good grade average. I think she feels like she's way too smart to be a racer. Watch with the car, the ball. We need a bit more speed, a bit more speed. Watch with the car. That's Derek Walker talking to, her, to his driver. She and Jason Leffler have been in a pretty good contest, and for a while, Leffler had gone into fourth position, but now Fisher is back in the fourth spot. Right now, everybody's really settled in. There's, there's not really much going on as far as fights, but uh, we still have 91 laps to go, which is a long way, so we just got past the halfway mark. And, uh, Let's get into uh, Jack Aroon, who's with Jeff Ward. It's so much promise for the Harris team, and now so much disappointment. It was tough. We had a really good car the whole time out. And, uh, you know, we got a little loose there in traffic towards the end, so we kind of backed up with some lappers, but we came in, would have made an adjustment. It was only like two laps to go before the pit, and I was going outside El Seo, and knew I wasn't going to have them. I just didn't want to lift on the straightaway. And, just uh, the back end stepped out for what reason, we don't know yet, and I saved it and hit the wall. Jeff, what about track conditions out there right now? Oh, they feel good. The car was perfect the whole time. It's, uh, you know, I don't know, it looks like some of the cars at the end of the run are getting loose, but uh, that has a tendency here, but our car was working great, so it was unfortunate. Well, he's got to feel pretty good. He's on the team that won last year's Indianapolis 500. There indeed is Eliseo Salazar putting another lap on Chuck Lazier in the miles of Pope Tricelli racing car. Well, the real battle is going on right behind that. Uh, Greg Grace trying to get his lap back. He's closing on Salazar, trying to get the lap back. Again, he lost the lap because of pit strategy. He uh, hit under the green and that hurt him. Here is Doug Dodaro and the Mid-America Freight Delara slowing down on the racetrack and on the apron. 
as he comes in, and we understand that Eddie Cheever's back on the track. We will return with more of the Vegas Indy 300 from Las Vegas Motor Speedway after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Mobile One. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Here now, Bob Jenkins. We are just past the halfway point of the Vegas Indy 300 here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We did go caution because of Doug Dodaro who stalled on the track. The action right now is on pit road. Here's Vince Welch. The leader, Aliseo Salazar, in the pits. They are not going to adjust the chassis. That gives you an indication of how smoothly the car is running. Just fuel and tires for Salazar. It's a smooth stop, and away he goes. A.J. Boyt believes he's got a potential winner today. Jack Aroot. Yeah, but he'll have to compete with Mark Dismore in that challenge with the Team Kelly team. Meanwhile, the only infinity in the field, that being Eddie Cheever, has been experiencing fuel pressure problem the problem is the fuel pickup and also the system that reads the fuel pickup it's not responding so the crew has to manually try and estimate the fuel and let Eddie Cheever know by radio unfortunately that's why Cheever ran himself out of fuel during the last pit stop Bob Let's bring you up to date on what's happened so far. We're on lap 124 here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the Vegas Indy 300. Third race of the 2000 campaign for the Indy Racing Northern Lights Series. Right now, the leader of the race being shown as Mark Dismore. He has been one of five leaders okay. so far. P3, also, Salazar, uh, Ray, second McGee, place and Lutler have here been here up front. Time. We're in our fifth caution period of the right, afternoon. First and second, and the and average the speed of the race so far under green 135.8 miles an hour. We'd like to thank Ari Leyendijk for sitting in with us here during a few segments of this race. And Ari, we look forward to again seeing you during the month of May in Indianapolis and being with us in the booth for the Indy 500. I'm looking forward to that, and we'll see you then in Indianapolis. All right, Ari. Two-time Indy winner. Ari Leyendijk. Eliseo Salazar lost three positions in the pits. Dismore picked up one. Goodyear stayed in third. Sarah Fisher moved up two. And Jason Leffler stayed in fifth. Now, Ayrton Dare did gain a lap back, so now we have six fly, cars on fly. the lead lap. Look at that traffic. There's three wide going down. That Salazar on the inside, the multicolored blue and red car. And Billy Bowman. Oh, spent Sarah right in front of the leader. Fisher in and right side of Salazar. Both slam into the pole. I am okay. You heard Sarah say she's okay. I'm okay. He just heavy breathing, but they all got in a group, and it might have taken some of the air off of Sarah's car. Yeah, the back he, got, he was crying here, too. Yep. Tough to lay blame in a situation like that. You're running so close together, but what it does is eliminate two very top contenders here. Only six cars on the lead lap, and now we have four as both Fisher and Salazar are out. Well, we talked about it early, Bob, uh, when they, they produce a lot of downforce when they're by themselves, but you get them in traffic, they lose some of that downforce, uh, some of that aerodynamic grip, and the, the balance changes, and it can catch them out. Let's take a look in slow motion at uh, this incident. Again, heavy traffic, three wide getting in. Salazar right here in the blue and red, red car. Sarah right here, the blue car. Now watch the back end will just get out from underneath her. The back end, it just gets a little bit too loose, and uh, Salazar has nowhere to go. Boy, Salazar went in pretty heavily. You can see the debris fly by his head. I mean, very fortunate. A lot of debris, but it all got by his head. From another angle, the Fisher is on the left. Here's Fisher. Here's Salazar. And right now, Jose was thinking about going to the inside, it looks like. But then Fisher's car gets loose, does the half spin, comes down in front of Eliseo, and then he is just collected in the incident. He has nowhere to go. It just Everybody's just so close. The competition is just so tight. But look at the debris come off this car. Good catch fencing here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, keeping it all inside the racetrack itself. 
the unfortunate thing is that Salazar is out of the race and Fisher also. And Salazar gets by and Sarah just spins in front of him. I mean, it's, I'm not sure that Salazar was close enough to take the air off of her car, but uh, for whatever reason. And Eliseo is waving to the fans as he is okay, but a very badly damaged race car and no chance of having a repeat winner here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. He is the only driver who has previously won here that is competing this year. And so there will be a cleanup here for a while, and we will take a break. There are the top five. It's Dismore, Goodyear, Dare, Leffler, and Robbie McGee, the top five. Under our sixth caution here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, a two-car crash involving Sarah Fisher and Eliseo Salazar. They are okay. We're on board with Mark Dismore, who is the leader of the race, and we don't want to wish him any bad luck, but we do want to remind you what happened to him during the final practice late yesterday afternoon. After winning the pole position, a big engine explosion during happy hour. I thought it was a piston, and that's got to be a pretty large hole in the piston to smoker like that. Now the other member of the front row as we began this race was Greg Ray. And right now he finds himself back in the seventh position. Now he was one of those who was in the pits or had just pitted when the caution came out and therefore he is a lap down. But nevertheless, Greg appears to be turning around his season. He's running in seventh right now. It has not been a good first two races of the year 2004, the defending series, Indy Racing Northern Light Series champion. However, he is here today with Treadway Racing and Jason Lester. And we'll go back and show you some other drivers who uh, are doing well here today. Running in the top 10, the 18 car driven by Sam Hornish. Hornish from Defiance, Ohio in the advanced power coding G-Force entered by PDM Racing. Well, those guys, uh, you know, that's a, they haven't had as big a budget as some of the guys out there, but they're doing a heck of a job. Got him in the top 10 as a, as a rookie, uh, doing a good job. Four dumb mechanics, if you don't already know. Right. It's allegedly the, uh, the abbreviation there for PDM Racing. But Sam Hornish, a rookie, began on the form of the 2000 and Atlantic. Frank's doing a very good job. Speaking of rookies, here's the guy who has really been very impressive in his rookie season. This is Jared Schrader. This is one of the uh, cars from the TriStar Motor Sports team entered by Tony Stewart and Larry Curry. This is the Armour Swift Eckridge Delara. But well, we haven't seen Tony on his knees yet. We've got to follow one of those pit stops. And Tice Carlson, it has been a tough weekend, especially since yesterday afternoon at happy hour when Carlson crashed. He had to start at the rear of the field in a backup car. He's up to 12th position at the moment. 12, make that two laps down. Two laps down in the 12th position. Allinger Jr. finds himself in eighth place. He, too, is a lap down. Four cars on the lead lap. Dismore, Goodyear, Dare, and Leffler. Then McGee, Boat, Ray, Unser Jr., Robbie Buell, Sam Hornish, and, and Jared Schrader are all one lap down. Carlson two laps down, and Jacques Lazier, running in 13th position, is two laps down, or rather five laps down in the 13th spot. You saw that shot inside Unser's car. He had his hand up. It wasn't like he's waving at the crowd. He's just trying to relax it and uh, make sure he gets uh, all the feeling back in those hands because you grip it pretty hard when you're in some of these battles, especially with the competition been as tight as it's been out there. Uh, it's a good opportunity for him to relax and, and, and get back up to speed. Well, there has been a great job done by the track crew here in getting this debris cleaned up. Salazar's car moving off the track. We should be racing before too much longer. The Indy Racing Northern Light Series Vegas Indy 300 is still under caution as Robbie McGee, we're seeing him there in the number five car, the Ball Not Comp. He is running in fifth position right now, running for Treadway Racing. Of course, Sam Schmidt drove for Treadway last year, but Sam was involved in an accident earlier this year at Orlando in which he was paralyzed. We had an opportunity to uh, visit with him earlier this week. We showed you the piece on our Indy Racing Today program a little bit earlier. Uh, can show you a little bit of that just in a few minutes here. Well, 
I know Robbie's been in the middle. Of, there's been some great action out there, Bob. And uh, I guess my question would be, I wonder if you can buy a heart monitor on mall.com <laughs> because his heart's probably been, up, the rate has probably been up there substantially. Well, Tom, Tom, right now, he is going to be the first of the front runners to take advantage of this caution and come on to pit road. Uh, they've decided that they're going to come down and bring it on to pit road. All right, earlier this week, Vince Welsh had a chance to visit with Sam Schmidt in his St. Louis Rehabilitation Hospital. And here are some of the things that Sam had to say. If I were talking to uh, all the fans out there, I would say, uh, you know, we're a lot better shape than we were when we came in here. And uh, I feel really good about the progress. I feel a lot stronger. Uh, I'm going to be around. Uh, I'm not quite sure what condition I'm going to be in around, but uh, we still think we can walk out of this deal and, and uh, that I really do appreciate the cards and letters. And uh, uh, if everybody says as many prayers as they said they did in writing to me, uh, I feel God's going to heal me just to get him off their back, you know, because uh, he's, uh, he's got to be hearing from a lot of people uh, about my situation. So uh, tell everybody out there that I'm, I'm doing great and uh, I love the support and, uh, and, and thanks for, for so many wonderful thoughts and, and letters and everything. to Dismore, and then of course we would have to have a caution to be able to get up through the, uh, right on the leader once again. All right, well, let's get updates from the pit area now. Jack Root, I think strategies maybe changed a little bit down there, hasn't they? Well, they sure did before we went to that Sam Schmidt piece. You know, Robbie McGee, one of the front runners, wanted to run the pit road. Why? Because the length of that pit stop, that team felt like some of the others, including the leader, Mark Dismore, that one more stop and they could be home free, not have to come out of pit road again. But in the case of Robbie Buell, the discussions are about going in under normal circumstances, taking on a full load of 35 gallons of methanol, change four tires, and then we call short pit. We went for a splash and go with about a handful of laps. Vince? Gare is running in just his third Indy Racing Northern Lights Series event, and he's running in third place. Thought to be maybe the second driver for Team Extreme behind Davey Hamilton. Not running that way today. They say they've got to make one more pit stop, obviously. They want to run it as long as possible. If it stays green, it's a crapshoot. They're going to have to come in under a make a green flag stop. They don't want to do it. They're going to try to determine right now how many laps they have left. Dare had his best career start here today in 12th position, and he has his best run go, and his best career finish was at Orlando when he came home in 11th position. This is his only third Indy Racing Northern Light Series event. Well, they need to get to about 15 more laps, and they get in that window where they could go the rest of the way. So there's 15 to 16 more laps that uh, they have to go before they can pit and make it to the end. Here is Greg Ray coming up on Robbie McGee. Both of these cars are not on the lead lap, but they are battling for position. McGee is in fifth and Ray in sixth spot. And it's really unfortunate, Tom, that these guys, some of these guys got caught in that uh, caution flag that dropped them a lap down because they have been very, very competitive. Well, some of them got caught by the yellow, but uh, Ray 
Bernays team, the Bernard team, had made a strategy uh, situation where they didn't stop under the first yellow and got them out of sequence and it hurt them. Rain dropped all the way back to 16th position on lap number 70, but he is back up to the sixth line. for Discord. Back with more after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Back at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, 152 laps completed now in the Vegas Indy 300. This is the best battle on the racetrack. It's for second position. It involves Scott Goodyear and Ayrton Dare. Dare's actually caught Goodyear, and, uh, but he gets up behind him. They're so close in speed that uh, Again, the air loss off the car affects Dare, and he can't quite make the pass happen. And Al Unser Jr. is running right behind them, but Al Unser Jr. is not on the lead lap. He is in seventh position. Let's go down to Jack Aru. Well, let's check in about the first with Doug Tadaro. Doug, uh, engine problems with all your Mid-American team again. Yeah, Mid-American team, we uh, broke our good motor on Thursday, so uh, today we, we put the backup motor in. We we're just hoping to get laps today and, uh, and finish the race and get some valuable experience and uh, they didn't quite last for Another driver that wanted to get some valuable laps, but she uh, got more than that. You were running up front, and then tell us what happened, Sarah. Well, you know, I don't really know. The back of the car came around on me, and I don't know whether it was me, the draft, or, or something that broke on the car. I don't know what exactly it was, but the rear of the car came around on me almost instantly. And, uh, you know, I, there's nothing you can do about it when that happens. You're so long for the ride? Oh, yeah. I, I was having a great time out there. It was, it was really fun. I was, I was driving a good line, and I think I was racing really hard. Uh, Derek was finally, finally took the position of spotter this race, and he was doing a heck of a job. So I think the both of us were working really well together as a team, and uh, the rest of the team did a really good job on pit stops. It's just unfortunate that we ran into what we did. We say that this is important race-wise because it builds momentum for Indy. What about for the Cummins Diesel team? Well, you know, I, I think that we're going to have to make some decisions now, and uh, we're just going to see where it goes. But, uh, you know, we're going to be prepared regardless. These guys are, are really good, and, and they know what they're doing. And uh, we're going to be... Well, what sort of decisions are you talking about? Oh, we're just going to make decisions on how to rebuild the car and in which manner to rebuild it and uh, which way we're going to go with that. Okay, she had that right foot firmly planted on the throttle today. She looked really good, and it's unfortunate that uh, it did crash out. Now here is Mark Dismore giving up the lead. Hey, uh, pit lane, guys, pit lane. Watch your speed, watch your speed, watch your speed. Should be his final pit stop. All right, Dismore, we're on talking lap. about one turn a wing in, one turn a wing in. Well, again, I'm not sure about final pit stop. There's quite a ways to go. This is going to be real close on fuel at the end. Well, they got 52 laps to go, Tom. Hit the mark. Hit the mark. Pit road is clear. You're the only car here. And Stop. Reset fuel. Reset fuel. Get that thing full. Let's get it full, guys. They put All right, two go, go, go. You're the only car here. Pit speed. Pit speed. Guys, they put two turns a wing in Dismore's car. Obviously, they were trying to hold out for the green floor for the yellow flag, didn't get it. And Robbie McGee was also trying to hold out for the yellow and pit at the same time that Dismore was pitting, maybe hoping to pass him in the pits and get that lap back. Scott Goodyear has a lead now, and he's put it back to Dismore lap down. But again, Dismore and, all, and Goodyear and all the others on the lead lap will have to have at least one more pit stop. This inside Unser's car trying to get by Goodyear. Goodyear the leader. This gets you back on the lead lap about to get by. Good job underneath. Dare again under Goodyear. Goodyear on the outside. And Dare goes to the lead. Ayrton Dare is leading his first Indy Racing Northern Light Series event. Boy, this young Brazilian rookie is looking very, very good. But you just get held up just a little in traffic, and you lose that momentum. And boy, the competition's so close, they just jump on top of you. Team Extremes, Ayrton Dare and the USA Credit.com G-Force at the front of the field now. And we've been told all along that this guy is for real, and we believe him. Jack Aruk is with Aliseo Salazar. And Aliseo is showing the wounds from a big time crash. What happened to your knees, Aliseo? Well, I was getting ready to pass, you know, Sarah Pitcher, and she spun in front of me, you know, and 
I was in a half a yard in front of her. She said that she, she didn't want to do powder pass racing, you know, but honestly, I think that's what she should do. You know, she's not prepared to run here. Every time she's on the track, she crashes. This time we had the quickest car. We came all the way from the back, and this is serious stuff. This is not for her. But what, let's go back to the question I asked about your knees. What happened? Well, I banged, I banged both knees, you know, pretty badly in the steering column, but uh, fortunately, it's just, you know, they're swollen, but they're not broken, so we'll be in good shape for Indianapolis. Just a big shame for AJ Foy Racing. We were the class of the field today, and it would have been great, you know, to be a, a repeat winner here, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. Sometimes the passion, guys, will really get to you. We can forget what Alisao Salazar did when he was new to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, and I'd have to, uh, Salazar is a little hard on Sarah. I, uh, that was a little bit uncalled for. Sarah had been doing a good job out there, and uh, you know, she'd been racing her heart out. So I, I don't know if I agree with uh, his version of the deal, but obviously he got caught up in the accident and uh, can't be as objective as he'd like to be, probably. <laughs> well, we uh, now have Greg Ray and Alanzer Jr. both back on the lead lap. They've been able to pass Ayrton Dare, and so it's Dare, Goodyear, Leffler, Ray, and Unser on the lead lap, and Sam Hornish is doing a great job in the sixth position. Well, that's uh, three rookies in the top six. That's not too bad. <laughs> Talking about Arthur Dare and letting uh, Alan Sir Jr. get by him, guys. Dare had been warned from the IRL officials from ch for uh, chopping earlier in the race. It happened a second time and then was just told a moment ago, if you chop again, you're going to get a black flag. Certainly would be a costly mistake at one lap 164. Not something that you want to do to the leader. And here is a guy who has just been doing an outstanding performance. This is Jason Leffler, who has been on the lead lap all day. He is running in third position, about 13 and a quarter seconds behind the leader, Dare. This gentleman, of course, from the uh, Four Series Grand National Division. He's a regular for the Joe Gibbs team in that series, but he brings an incredible amount of uh, short track racing to the Indy Racing Northern Light Series in the United States Auto Club pitches. And Bob, don't forget, Jason Leffler ran a Bush Series race right at this Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and we asked him if it would make a difference. He said he actually learned a lot about the racetrack that he's been able to apply today. Well, here's the guy that Jason is looking forward to. Scott Goodyear, who is running in second position. The separation is about six and a half seconds between first and second. Well, you can see his hands. Uh, some people have been pushing out there, but he's not moving the steering wheel very much. Let's watch him down in this next corner. If, his push, if he was pushing, this right hand would go all the way over to here. Now, he's not turning that wheel very far at all, so I'm saying the car's probably a little bit loose on it, Bob. That's why he's not able to use more throttle. So Goodyear runs second to Ayrton Dare, Leffler, Ray, and Alexa Jr. are also on the lead lap with 167 of 200 late eight laps completed. Caution is out once again here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. An accident involving Jason Leffler, who was running in the third position. And here's what happened. Well, he just gets up a little high. I don't know why he got up there, but he got up a little high, gets in the marbles, and then uh, he just doesn't have any control of the car. He just goes to the wall. He got out of the car under his own power is OK. But now the pits are okay, open. OK, buddy, I see you. I see you. And here I'm they come. Down. Dare, the leader on top. Scott Goodyear in second place on the bottom. And that is Mark Wida who's, call, Wida who's calling the shots. And this is an eclectic group for Ayrton Dare. They've got a stockbroker. They've got a former West Point cadet. They've got a senior racquetball champion doing the air in the vent. This group, including an electrical contractor, started last year with Team Extreme and the USACredit.com team. Oh, a problem with the car. A problem with the car not getting back up to speed. He still has not come up to speed. And he stopped, Jack. Well, you heard the RPMs. He revved the motor up extremely like, high, and it, it might like be a gearbox. It sounded like the clutch or maybe the gearbox let go, Tom. Yep. But he used a lot of throttle there. And, you know, again, it's a rookie under a lot of pressure. Yep. And again, we see one of those on the lead lap having problems. And it is a gearbox, guys. Oh. 
So Dare's chance of winning have just gone out the window. Well, it looked good. You know, it's real fortunate to get your last pit stop under the yellow, especially a new team and a young driver. You think that would give them a little cushion, but uh, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of adrenaline, and uh, small mistake, a little too much RPM for that motor and gearbox to handle on the exit. Well, this gets more exciting and interesting as we go along because now we have Scott Goodyear in the lead. Al Unser Jr. is in second. Greg Ray is going to be in third position and an exciting finish at Las Vegas coming up. Bob Jenkins, Tom Sneva, Jack Arood, and Vince Welch back at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. There are the top five. Goodyear, Unser, Ray, and Dismore. All of those drivers on the lead lap. Robbie Buell is a lap down. Dismore is actually at the tail end of the lead lap. He will start ahead of Scott Goodyear. Now, Ayrton Darre came in first, but he has a problem. You take a look at where the others came in and out. Jack, let's talk with Ayrton. Well, it's actually a little bit like a funeral or a wake down here. Ayrton, can you describe your feelings right now? My car was perfect. I was flat out all the way around. I mean, even on the draft, the car is running perfect. I never had a, such a good car in my life. Then I put first gear, get out of the pits, and just thing just broke. When you know that you came so close to scoring your first victory and as a rookie, can you describe to people what you feel right now in your gut? It's a good feeling, but I mean, right now I'm feeling really bad, you know, I mean, I, I want to stay on the race, but not happen, you know. Fellas, I think the look says well, it all. The emotion, yeah, and the uh, look in his eyes tell it all. Well, and, you know, we hear from Greg Ray's pit that he's lost first and second gear leaving the pit. So, um, you know, it, it might not be just a rookie mistake. This could be a, a, a problem with a, a gearbox situation. Absolutely. Greg Ray is down in the pit area. And again, we see a driver on the lead lap having problems. Well, tomorrow, ABC Sports continues its coverage of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs with conference quarterfinal action. Game six, St. Louis against San Jose. Live at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, 12 noon Pacific tomorrow on ABC, home of the Stanley Cup. We talked about momentum heading into the Indianapolis 500. At the moment, in first place is Scott Goodyear, and running second here at Las Vegas is Al Unser Jr. Does this look like a familiar situation? Remember 1992. Here it is as Al Unser Jr. led Scott Goodyear off turn number four. They came down. Goodyear made a move at the very end. It was the closest finish in the history of the Indianapolis 500 with Al Unser Jr. winning. Now they find themselves first and second here in the final tune-up before the first Indy 500 of the new millennium. Well, with this kind of action, we might need uh, AlSponsorTickets.com to find a ticket for Indianapolis. <laughs> The pace car is pulled off. They will get the green flag on lap 177. Green flag, green flag. Well, you can see Scott Sharp get underneath McGee. Or Scott Goodyear get underneath McGee. So now Scott there. got a good restart. Now right ahead of Scott Goodyear as Alex or Jr. is trapped back in some traffic. Right ahead of Scott Goodyear is Mark Dinsmore, who's now running in third position, the last car on the lead lap. Well, Little Al, look at the traffic in front of Little Al. He just got caught back there, but everybody's fast. Some of these guys are lapped down. Look at that underneath. Nice move by Sam Hornish to the inside of Robbie Buell. Those two are battling for the fourth position. Vince has an update on Greg Ray. Ray put it in the wrong gear, trying to exit the pit, and that's where they had the uh, gearbox problem, obviously. Thomas Knapp, team manager, very disappointed. And uh, Ray, if you know anything, about this guy and the competitive nature. You know, he's not going to take another struggling finish lightly after uh, coming in 17th at Orlando and 19th at Phoenix. But remember, he started 21st in the first three laces, races last year before going on to win the championship. Well, now Al Unser Jr. has cleared himself of some of this traffic. He is now three and a third seconds behind Goodyear. We'll see if he can reduce that interval. There is the relationship between Still a couple of cars between them. Jack Arood is with Jason Lefler. And Jason, you certainly gave us a treat today. Tell us what happened. Uh, I think a tire went down. Uh, just went into turn one, and the thing picked up a real big push. I backed off. I thought early enough that I could never get it back. This is going to go the fence. So it's a shame, you know, I'm for this whole Treadway group. The car was good, and we were just getting some experience and uh, just trying to get some laps. And, you know, at least 
uh, <laughs> we're in good while we were out there, but uh, feel bad for everybody and all our sponsors. We know you've got a Bush deal with Joe Gibbs Racing, but what about first the Indianapolis 500 and second the Indy Racing Northern Lights Series? Uh, you know, I'm, it's been a dream of mine to run Indianapolis, and Joe's, you know, gave me his blessing, and, uh, of course, i got to thank him for letting me do it. And, but will you go to Indy? Oh, I'll be at Indianapolis 500. If uh, I can tell Joe I'm all right, and uh, I'll hope that I'll be in Indy. Okay. <laughs> well, he gave the car a great run. Jason Leffler. Well, Little Al's given this car a good run. He's been in serious traffic situations, but uh, he's got his eyes full. But so is Sam Hornish. That is the car right up ahead of Alex or Jr. And he's been unable to get around him so far. Now he's going to be able to as they go into turn one. But Sam Hornish is just having a great afternoon running in fourth position. Well, those guys have done a good job. I mean, Sam's kept it out of trouble. He's right there. The advanced power coding G-Force with the young driver from Defiance, Ohio, has been very strong all day. But Alexander Jr. now again is free of some traffic. And there is the interval. We'll see what it is. It was three and a third. Now it's four and a third seconds. So he's lost another second to Scott Goodyear. The other story to this side is that this more is actually a little quicker than uh, than Goodyear. He was just in the back of the lead lap when the uh, green went down. He's able to pull away from Goodyear, but he's going to need some kind of yellow, a little bit of assistance to uh, to make up that lap. That last lap, uh, Allenser Jr. had the fastest. Now we'll see if he does this time. Among the top two, he is fastest, running a 200.1 compared to Scott Goodyear's 198.8. Mark Dismore has been running in the 197, 198. Here is the battle for fifth position. There is Robbie Newell, Jared Schrader, and Robbie McGee. It's a three-car battle. I'm sorry, McGee is two laps down, so Buell and Schrader are in a battle for the fifth position. place to be. It's all over for Scott Goodyear sure as he yeah, comes here. into the pit area, but a big puff of smoke from the back of that car has brought him in. And once again, we see somebody running in the lead lap. In this case, the leader have problems. So now that allowed the pass for the lead, and guess who goes in to the top position? It's Al Unser Jr. <laughs> They go to work on Scott Goodyear's car, but an incredible disappointment for the Pennzoil Panther Racing Team as Rick Gallus, Allenser Jr.'s car owner, is being cautiously optimistic here. Boy, we've seen a lot of misfortune by those running up front, but if Allenser Jr. can hang on here, he's going to win, and Vince is with Rick. Rick, unbelievable. Sometimes you got to get a break, and you just got one there, and uh, Al got to be strong at the finish. Well, we just, you know, we got to get to the finish. We're we're excited. I mean, this is great, but we still got to get to the finish ourselves. Have you had any problems with the car today, or is the car well, running great really. now? We, had, uh, we, we just got caught out on one yellow, but we're fast enough we got our yellow back, so we'll just see what we can do. Alan Sir Jr. been running some of his fastest laps here in the late stages of the race. Racing is often getting breaks and taking breaks, and Alan Sir took a break at Phoenix, but maybe getting one here today. Well, reliability was a problem at, uh, at Phoenix for this team, so we'll just have to wait and see. We've got a few laps left. Both Allenser Jr. and Rick Gallus celebrated birthdays on the 19th of April. Allenser Jr. turned 38 and Rick Gallus turned 54. Wow, what a birthday celebration this is going to be in a few laps if Allenser Jr. can hang on to the lead. And Bob, think about this. Now all of a sudden, the decision that Allenser Jr. made with Rick Gallus yesterday to withdraw their primary car after they qualified it so miserably and to take an untested, untried car right out of the trailer and put it in the field, maybe paying them dividends. And it seems as if you want to have problems during qualifying and start back in the 20s for an E-Racing Northern Lights Series event. The winner in Orlando, Robbie Buell, started 22nd. Buddy Lazier started 26th at Phoenix, and Alan Sir Jr. started 21st here today. Well, remember, Lazier took an untried car and that hadn't had a lap on the racetrack and started at Phoenix and won the race. Here, Unser does it virtually the same thing. Scott Goodyear sits 
patiently but hopelessly in the pit area as the race continues. And Al Unser Jr. comes down to complete another lap, and there are 12 to go. Jack? Well, we're going to check John Barnes and the rest of the Pennzoil Panther crew have been troubleshooting to see if they can find out what the problem is. No, it's just a spoil on the right side pod. We can't really see what it is. We're trying to figure it out. Well, what they're going to do is, uh, they're, guys, they're going to button it back up, send them back out because there's just a handful of laps to go, and see if they can log some laps before the black flag again. Well, going into this race last year, Scott Goodyear was in the points lead in the Indy Racing Northern Lights Series. So, indeed, getting out there and getting as many points as possible may be valuable later on in the year. Well, how about Sam Hart? He's right behind Al Unser. Again, he's a lap down, but he's actually a little quicker than Al right now, trying to get that lap back. Hornish has had a great run, so has Robbie Buell and Jared Schrader. Here's the battle for fourth position. These two have been running together on the racetrack for many, many laps. Robbie McGee is behind them, but he is two laps down in the sixth position. Both Carlson, Ray, and Jacques Lazier, who we haven't talked very much about, but Jacques Lazier is running in tenth position. Lazier broke his back, of course, at the... Uh, or at uh, Orlando, missed Phoenix, and is hoping that he can duplicate what his brother did, that is, racing to a victory at the Indianapolis 500 with a broken back. Well, again, Robbie's done a great job. I didn't qualify that well, struggled with the car, but uh, we're able to uh, adjust it during the race, and uh, he's got it up front. The other thing is, Dismore is pulling away, but uh, again, he's going to need a yellow or some kind of help. He's not enough fast, uh, faster to, uh, to make up that kind of time with nine laps to go. Yeah, Mark Dismore is the only other car now on the lead lap with Al Unser Jr. And he is 17 to 30 seconds behind it. Jared Schrader goes for fourth and gets it. Schrader picks up fourth position from Robbie Buell. Again, still heavy traffic. Uh, Guys, got you can't fall asleep out there. You got to pay attention. You're on the edge all the time, and little mistakes uh, cause big problems. So you just got to be on toes. The Armour Swift Eckridge Delara, driven by Jared Schrader. That car owned by Tony Stewart, Larry Curry, and Andy Carr, TriStar Motorsports. And Bob, they had some problems before qualifying. They couldn't figure out why all of a sudden Schrader Sh Sh could platform all the way around the racetrack, and they were going slow. And it was just by happenstance that they noted, noticed that one of the bolts that holds the air cleaners on had actually sheared off, and it shifted all of the air intakes away, so that in essence, they were getting air not into the intake, but out the back side of the race car. Bobby Buell continues to run in fifth position, as now we are less than six laps from the finish of this race. Well, the question is, as Buell comes down to complete lap 202, can Al Unser Jr. hang on to the lead and pull off the victory here this afternoon in his third Indy Racing Northern Light Series start? Five to Five go. Five laps to go. Use your head out there. out there. No matter where you're at in the racetrack, there's going to be trouble and, and uh, problems for you to try to get around. But Al, obviously, at this point in the race, is just trying to bring it home clean. Yeah, he certainly doesn't want to take any unnecessary chances right now. He's got an extremely comfortable lead on Mark Dismore. He knows that Fair. if he can just go another three and a half laps, he's got this one won. Dismore, 18 and a half seconds back of Al Unser Jr. Now, Greg Gray is right behind Jr. as they come down to complete another lap, but Gray is in ninth position and had that gearbox trouble and spent some time in the pits. He finished 25th at Orlando, finished 9th at Phoenix, getting caught in the pits under a caution, led 22 laps at Phoenix, finished in the 9th position, but Al Unser Jr. is about three miles away now from his first victory in the Indy Racing Northern Light Series. The Dallas are holding on to each other. 
This ends a long drought for the Gallus Racing Team. It's been since 1993 since they made their way to victory lane. Today's win, if it would happen in the final couple of laps, would be victory number 20 for Gallus. He'll be coming down for the white flag next time around. You talk about momentum coming into Indianapolis. Alan Sir Jr. has missed so much running the Indianapolis 500. Has not done so okay, white flag, since the split. White flag. And now Alan Sir Jr. it appears is going to carry the momentum into the 84th running of the Indianapolis 500, and he will be sky high heading to Indy. Well, we know what Indianapolis means to the Unser family, and uh, this is going to be fun to go to Indy this way. He said after winning one of his two Indy 500s that Indianapolis is life to me. Al Unser Jr. in his third start in the Indy Racing Northern Light Series wins the Las Vegas Indy 300. Jr. wins at Las Vegas. Boys, let's go to victory lane. He finished 12 and a half seconds ahead of Mark Dismore. Sam Hornish, a great run, finishes third. Jared Schrader is fourth. See, Junior, Bobby they Buell don't fifth. Put their so one leg at a time. Allenser Jr. only led 20 laps of this race. But nevertheless, he led the most important one. Mark Dismore led hey, the I'll most. Go down to the 90. And Eliseo Salazar, who crashed out, led 28. Greg Gray uh, led 27 laps. And so Al Unser Jr. now heads toward victory lane for the first time in his Indy Racing Northern Light Series career. The Tickets.com Stars Encore Super Pack is about to visit victory lane. There are the top 10 finishers. Jacques Lazier gets a top 10 finish here at Las Vegas. Finishing just outside the top 10, Eddie Cheever, Scott Goodyear, dropped back to 12. And you see the results of the rest of the field. Stefan Gregoire crashing out. Jack. with Jack Aroot's microphone. <laughs> and Al Unser Jr. emerges. Alancer Jr. with his first win in the Indy Racing Northern Lights Series. Now we talked about in the uh, pre-race strategy how you're going to hang around and then make a run. You got a break with Goodyear going out. Yeah, we were very lucky. We got caught behind on that yellow, and then uh, I just thought, well, it bit me again. But I tell you, you know, Ticketstock.com, Encore Star Super Pack. The car ran beautiful all day, and I just welcome my new sponsors to Victory Lane. How about now going to Indy with the momentum? Well, I think it's, it's great, you know, more than... Really, more than anything, I just uh, I just want to say that this one's Cody's. An emotional Al Unser Jr. going to Indianapolis on a victory. Cody's young daughter, who was stricken with myelitis. <laughs> Join us Sunday, May 28th, for the 84th running of the Indianapolis 500, live at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. ABC Sports is online at abcsports.com, part of Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, <laughs> continuing the tradition of excellence. <laughs> Al Unser Jr. posts his first win in the Indy Racing Northern Light Series and getting congratulatory hugs from everyone, including Mark Dismore, who just came by and gave Al a big hug and told him, welcome back. Al Unser Jr. indeed back, and he's heading to the Indianapolis 500, his favorite race of all, on a winning note. You betcha. I mean, uh, this is the way we wanted it done, I guess. You know, that's why we worked so hard at Long Beach, because it was the race right before the Indy 500, and, and you just need the momentum to go into the month of May. And then, uh, you know, we, we got down a lap today, and my crew never gave up. We never gave up, and uh, 
and you know you just carry this momentum going into the month of May it's great crazy how things happen you struggled so much yesterday had to qualify your second car with 10 seconds to spare and then you end up getting the break today with Scott Goodyear's car going away in the last few laps. Yeah, I tell you, Scott, it was going to be tough to catch him. You know, he he had everything dialed in by that time, and so it was just, uh, you know, I just thought, well, we're going to be running second, but second it ain't bad. You know, going into the month of May, we know we can run with him, and uh, but then when Scott had his problems, you know, that was the way it goes. What was going through your mind in the last few laps? Just don't break, <laughs> you know, because I had I had. Uh, uh, been there before, you know, with a couple corners left to go and the engine let go on me and I was way back in 96 and uh, I was just praying that the, that the car didn't break and stayed under me and, you know, the lap traffic and all, I just was really careful, so. I know you've got a special young girl watching this one and uh, cheering for Dad. You betcha. I mean, this one, this one's Cody's and, uh, you know, it means a lot to us and, and so, uh, but I want to say hi to all my kids, Al and Cody and Shannon and, and little Joe, you know, we wish you were here. Alan Sir Jr. going to Indianapolis on a victory. Hey, that's right. Good job, man.